can you see my screen uh, yeah yeah just wait for a sec i just want to make sure that the, the streaming has begun then i'll introduce you Okay, uh, yeah, I think it's begun. So, uh, uh, hello everybody and uh, welcome to Ashoka's Colloquium. It's a great pleasure to, uh, to introduce Neelam Saikya. She is a Nehru Fulbright scholar currently located in, uh, uh, in the University of Virginia. Uh, and uh, before this, she did her PhD in IIT Delhi and spent some time in IIT Gauhati uh, ISI Delhi, IIT Guwahati, and in IISC Bangalore. And uh, she'll be talking on AGM and jellyfish swarms of elliptic curves. Over to you. Yeah. So uh, first of all, thank you so much for this invitation. And it is my pleasure to be here. So today's talk is uh, like, a very for, like very for a very general audience. So. So I'll be talking about uh, something like uh, AGM and uh, jellyfish uh, stuff uh, connecting elliptic curves. And this is uh, a joint work with uh, my advisor, Professor Ken Ono, his former student, uh, Michael Giffen, and his current postdoc, uh, Wei Lun Sai. So let's just begin. So, uh, so I'll be beginning by uh, uh, with some very basic definition. So if we choose uh, A and B are uh, two real numbers, uh, uh, strictly positive, then their arithmetic mean is defined as A plus B over two, or maybe you can say the average, and the geometric mean is uh, defined as square root of AB. So let me uh, just give you an example. So if we choose uh, A to be nine and B as one, then the arithmetic mean is nine plus one over two, which is five. And the geometric mean is uh, square root of nine, which is three. So now from the first example, we can, uh, we can view like uh, arithmetic mean is uh, uh, greater than or equal to geometric mean. Indeed, we have this uh, uh, inequality. I think all we know of, uh, since uh, our school days that uh, if uh, A and B are uh, real uh, positive numbers, then the arithmetic mean is as large as their geometric mean. So, and we know how to do this. So today uh, we uh, uh, will prove this uh, by using some pictures. For example, if we consider these two scores, which are identical. So, so, so let's just compute the, the uh, area of this uh, bigger circle. So this, uh, uh, this bigger square. So this uh, square is of side A plus B. So this uh, area is A plus B whole square. So now if you, uh, if you want to compute the uh, area of the square that is inside this uh, square, which is uh, like uh, colored in non-white stuff. So then the area of this non-white stuff is, as you can see, we have this uh, four uh, rectangles like here. So, and the area is, uh, each rectangle has area AB. Therefore, if we add this four rectangles, we get uh, four uh, AB. And certainly, as we can see here, that this area is, of course, uh, greater than or equal to four AB. So, so that's done. Like uh, the AGM, like uh, the arithmetic mean of uh, AB is as large as the trigeometric mean. So, so, so now, uh, so today I'm going to talk about something uh, which is uh, 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 called arithmetic and geometric mean sequence. So this is a sequence of tuples uh, like here. So this sequence is something related, I mean, can be defined in terms of arithmetic uh, uh, mean and geometric mean. So let me just give uh, the brief definition. So if uh, A and B are strictly positive real numbers such that A is strictly greater than B, then its uh, AGM sequence uh, is defined as the tuples uh, like here, where this A, uh, this A1 and B1 is defined to be uh, the initial value A and B. And uh, after that, uh, a n is defined to be the, uh, the arithmetic mean of the previous uh, tuple and B n is defined as the uh, geometric mean of this uh, previous tuple. 
So, so let me just give an example of AGM sequence. So as again, if we choose uh, this uh, tuple nine one, like if we choose A as nine and B is one, then, then their AGM sequence is given by this sequence. Like the first uh, pair is as it is nine one. And the second pair, it is like the arithmetic mean of nine and one, which is five and the geometric mean is three. Then the third tuple, so we have to compute uh, the arithmetic mean of this two guy. And this is the geometric mean of this two guy, then so on. So as we go further, we can see that this uh, the this a n is uh, is rapidly converts to uh, to a limit. I mean, uh, like I, I mean, a n and b n they converts to to the same limit. Like here, we can see this uh, a four. We have. Uh, up to four decimal places, they are equal here, up to seven de decimal places, they are equal. And we know that uh, like A and, and B and they share common limit. So, and I think this is all uh, we can do using some uh, basic calculus. Uh, so uh, let me give you a beautiful uh, application of this AGM stuff. So AGM uh, uh, sequence or maybe AGM stuff are used to uh, compute digits of pi. Uh, so these are the stuff that uh, work uh, uh, by Euler and Gauss. So today uh, we are uh, we are viewing some of the results of uh, Euler. So Euler uh, considered this uh, a tuple square root of two and one, like he choose A to be square root of two and B to be one, and he compute the AGM sequence of uh, this tuple. So any here we uh, use this notation of uh, uh, R to make ourselves uh, believe that we are in uh, the real number. So he compute the AGM sequence for the tuple square root of two and one. And uh, so after computing this, so he considered another uh, sequence of real numbers, which is defined as P of N, which is defined uh, in terms of a n and b n like this, like uh, a n square over the weighted sum of these differences. And uh, he showed that this, uh, uh, the sequence p n converges and uh, it converts to pi. Okay, so uh, let me give you a few terms of the sequence p n, then I think we can, uh, we'll be sure like how it converges to pi. For example, if we compute the first pair, so it is four, like uh, uh, then p2 is 3.1876, uh, and then p3 we have 3.14168 and so on. So here, when we compute p3, we, we, we can see like up to third decimal places, it giving the value of pi. So now, uh, you will be surprised to see the next two values. So if we compute P4, then we, we can we see that this gives you the value of pi up to 11 decimal places. And just after the next term, which is P5, if we compute P5, we'll uh, see that it gives the value of pi up to 20 decimal places. So this is uh, something beautiful, like giving you uh, uh, some uh, rapidly, I mean, you can say like, uh, uh, digits of pi. So, so I think if if you want to compute uh, uh, digits of pi, I think up to uh, hundred. I mean, I, I think up to thousand decimal places. Uh, I think we can just need to uh, compute p ten or maybe p fifteen. I mean, this uh, sequence is that much uh, 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 rapidly converges to pi. So, so, so these are the stuff that uh, Euler uh, uh, or maybe Gauss uh, studied. So, so, so this everything so so how to compute the uh, the digits of pi everything connects to uh, uh, the special functions so so as we know like when we compute if you want to compute the limit of uh, agm sequence then we have to deal with some elliptic integrals and those elliptic integrals somehow they are did the gauss prove that that some elliptic integrals is connected to uh, uh, like it has some close formula in terms of special functions, which involves pi itself. So that's how this pi business come out. And like, uh, it, it is very useful to uh, uh, compute the digits of pi. So today, uh, uh, so we are uh, focusing on the stuff, which is, uh, which is uh, like uh, AGM over finite fields. And this stuffs are uh, totally new. 
Nobody has studied uh, AGM over finite fields, like AGM over R is quite popular, but AGM over finite fields, nobody has studied. So we uh, wanted to study uh, the stuff over finite field, and we want to look for what are the number three consequences this uh, AGM business will give us. I mean, wh what we can study over finite fields, if we can if we construct AGM over finite fields. So here, we need to uh, observe a few things, like, uh, before I uh, give you the definition, we have to observe like what uh, what kind of finite fields we can uh, is good for us like to define AGM over finite fields. So 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 observe that that half of the real uh, numbers have square root. That is, as we know, like when we compute the positive uh, uh, square root of a positive uh, real number, we get a, a square root in R. So if we can if we include negatives, we 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 won't get a square root in R we have to ultimately uh, land up in uh, the complex number. So this is our first observation. If you, uh, in R, if you wanna do uh, uh, AGM business, we have to uh, uh, take like the positive square root. Like when we compute the square root of four, we will take two, we won't take minus two. So, so, so that's how like uh, choosing a positive square root gives you uh, maybe allow you to, uh, to uniquely define the next term. So, so yeah, so like square root of minus one is not in R. So, so these things we have to uh, observe while defining AGM over finite fields. So now, so what are the obstacles we might have over finite field? As we know, like uh, for any finite field so that half of the non-zero values are square and half of them are non-square. And so here we uh, we we, we want to know like uh, like choosing a, a square root like uh, taking a, like a positive square positive or negative square root, does it really matter like uh, so 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 like if minus one uh, is a quadratic residue or not does it uh, uh, give us some uh, problem while defining uh, AGM over finite field so these things we uh, we have to deal with. And luckily, if we choose our finite field as uh, uh, with Q elements where Q is congruent to three mod four, then we are in some, uh, we are okay, like we can define. So, so here, let me just give you the definition over of AGM sequence over finite field. How do we define? So for rest of the talk, we, uh, we fix Q as prime power for which Q congruent to three mod four. So, so this is the definition of AGM over a finite field. So this is totally new, we, we, we define this. So if we choose uh, A and B are uh, a non-zero elements of a finite field at Q, such that A is not equal to plus minus B, we have to choose this because like if we choose A equal to plus or minus B, then ultimately we will end up in some trivial sequence and which is no longer of interest. Therefore, uh, we always choose A not equal to plus minus B. And we choose at the initial stage, we choose a b as a, as a square so that we can define the next term. So here the AGM or, or AGM sequence of uh, a b is defined as the stuple uh, a i's and b i's where a1 b1 is defined to be the initial pair a b. And after that, as uh, as n greater than or equal to 2, we define a n as the arithmetic mean of the previous uh, tuple. And Bn is defined as the square root of the previous uh, tuple, such that Bn is uh, we, we choose Bn such that this two uh, will give you the a square like product of this two will give you a square so that we can uh, we can uh, define the next uh, term a n plus one and Bn plus one. Okay, so let me just give you some uh, examples so to have some clear view. So here, uh, I would uh, we would like to uh, note that so when we choose Q uh, congruent three mod four, then as in the case of R, we we know that minus one is not a square for for such fields. So minus one is not a square. So this will guarantee the uh, unique square root, and we will see uh, in from our examples that this is this give you uh, uniqueness of uh, choosing a square root, and which is well defined. So. So therefore, so now we uh, have some examples. For example, if you consider the finite field F7, 
So here we choose uh, a, uh, a1 as one and b1 as two. So as we know, if we take the product of one and two, which is two and which is a square. So we can, uh, as our initial uh, pair, we can choose one and two. And this symbol, uh, this symbol is, uh, is called legendary symbol as, as defined here. So it takes value one if x is a square and minus one if not x not a square over the in the finite field f q. So, so here, uh, like a two is a square in F7. So, so, so we can choose uh, A as one and B as two. So therefore we can choose A2 as arithmetic mean of one and two, which is uh, three over two. And, and then uh, uh, here, here uh, we, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, inverse of two over, over seven is four. So if we multiply four with three, we get uh, five modulo seven. And then, so, so, so here, uh, uh, like as we know, when we compute the square root of one and two, uh, one dot two, which is two, and two is a square in F7, uh, like we have uh, uh, the square root of two is either plus three or minus three. So therefore B2 belongs to uh, this set, either it is either three or minus three. Now, we have to deal with the third condition that give you a unique square root. So here we have to check uh, whether which uh, square root will give you the next uh, uh, next term. So if we choose uh, our uh, B2 as three, this will give you five, like here it is five. So five into three with 15, which is a square. So therefore it's one and minus uh, 15 is not a score, which is minus one. Therefore, this forces us to choose like B2 as three. So now, so, so this is some kind of, uh, so this is, everything is well-defined. So, so in this way, if we compute the uh, AGM for one, two, uh, we'll have uh, like one initial pair, we have one, two, then one, two goes through five, three, then five, three goes to four, one and so on. And here, uh, note that since, uh, uh, we are in the finite field. So we have only finitely many tuples. So ultimately we have to end up having, uh, like we end up having in, uh, entering into, into some loop, into some orbits. Like we, we won't get an infinite sequence as in the case of R. So over finite field, we will end up uh, in an orbit. Like here, after three, six, if you compute uh, the next term, we'll get one, two. So this will uh, uh, give you that, like after this, after this, uh, 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 after three, six, we'll again have one, two, five, three, four, one, so on. So we put a bar here to give you that to, uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, to denote like the sequence is periodic. Like uh, after this, this kind of uh, uh, everything appears like, like here. So, so I know, uh, and also one important thing that uh, we would uh, like to notice, like if you compute, uh, if you take the, uh, this, uh, this tuple uh, six three, like if you want to compute the, uh, the AGM sequence for six three. So since uh, uh, the, uh, the next term, like if you, at the initial pair, if it is six three, then like here, since uh, arithmetic mean and geometry mean both are commutative. So therefore, uh, if you compute, the first, uh, after six, if you compute the next term, we'll get one, two, like here. So if you compute the sequence for six, three, uh, so here at the first place, we have six, three, and then we have one, two, and then so on. So so when we compute, uh, uh, like if you take any uh, tuple here in the reverse way, we always get one term extra at the beginning and the rest are same as here. So this will uh, give you uh, like uh, if you like every uh, like uh, every pair that appears here, they have if you compute the sequence with the uh, AGM sequence with the reverse uh, pair, this will ultimately give you the same uh, orbit unless I mean with an extra term. Okay. So using uh, if you want to compute uh, like AGM uh, sequence of any uh, any pair. So, so we can, uh, like here, we have some orbit and we have some extra term here. So we can make a directed graph of this uh, AGM sequences. Like 
uh, we can use the admissible pairs like uh, like we did like uh, like we did uh, uh, in the in this example. We first compute the admissible pairs. Admissible pair means like the pairs that we from which we can compute uh, the AGM sequence. And uh, so so we can use that admissible pairs to uh, to uh, to as the vertex of a graph and if two pairs are adjacent we can uh, we can have an edge so using uh, this uh, term like using these things we can make an uh, a directed graph for for example for f7 like we have we make a, a, a directed graph like the like this and here as 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 we have seen in this example every pair that appears here if you consider a pair with with the reverse like six three we all we have one tentacles like here so this pair they, they, it has no parent like uh, like here so 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 we, we and this graph is look like jellyfish so therefore we recall this uh, sequences like we we make uh, out of those adm sequences we we compute the directed graphs and all these directed graphs uh, we call a jellyfish so I, I think as F seven is I think is too small for 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 to get, so have to have some idea. So let me just give you a bigger uh, finite field. For example, if we consider F nineteen, then we have if we compute uh, uh, all the AGM sequences for admissible pairs of uh, the finite field F F nineteen. So so if we compute the the AGM sequences, we have this eight uh, jellyfish here, like eight directed graphs out of which six will have uh, 12 uh, nodes like nodes are the admissible pairs like here with length one tentacles and the two uh, uh, two jellyfish we uh, have 36 nodes so so yeah so we so so these are the only uh, uh, or I mean orbits or maybe uh, jellyfish or we can construct for f19. So, so yeah, so now let me just uh, give you some basic properties of this AGM stuff. So if you compute all the AGM sequences, we'll get uh, as distinct union of directed graphs like here, they all are distinct. No one is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, they have empty intersection. So all are disjoint. And here we are uh, so 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 the number of jellyfish like in in a in a uh, in a in a AGM sequence of all the uh, admissible pairs, so 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 this number DFQ so this denotes the number of jellyfish that appears in the in the union. And uh, and each JI which are jellyfish are bell head and with length one tentacles from node. And uh, and we call this JFQ. Uh, it's called a jellyfish swarm. The the total like uh, union of all the jellyfish. We call them jellyfish swarm. And now we'll uh, we'll uh, uh, give you some basic uh, theorems, like some basic observations that we we initially made. So so what we we did. So if you can if you consider a finite field uh, with Q congruent to three mod four then we can count actually how many uh, total number of nodes or maybe uh, we can say like total number of admissible pairs we can have uh, in the over over the jellyfish swarm so so we have q minus 1 times q minus 3 by 2 total nodes like uh, so so and, and it is easy to prove like uh, like if you choose uh, a and b as uh, as uh, suppose if you choose a as uh, as a square, then since in the in the initial case we we need to choose b such that a b is a square. So if you choose a, a square, then we have q minus one by two options, and for b we have uh, like q minus one by two since b is not equal to uh, a. Therefore q minus one by two minus one. So ultimately we have q minus one times q minus three over four. And similarly we can choose a as non-square. So therefore we have q minus one by two. And therefore, uh, this leads to choose B as non-square. So ultimately, when you add them, we get Q minus one by uh, Q minus one times Q minus three by two. So these many nodes we have in a in a jellyfish swarm. And uh, as we have seen in the in the pictures, like each jellyfish is a is a bell head with length one tentacles from each node. Like 
like uh like this is easy to show like if you have a pair in the in the in the in the orbit so it must have uh, a parent if must have a parent in the orbit like if small a small b is a is a node in the in the orbit then it must have a parent like here so we suppose this parent we we we, we name it as capital a comma b then using elementary uh, uh calculus we can we can say that that b a is also a pair uh, as also a parent for small a small b but then we can say that if uh since a b is a is a parent so it has its own parent and this will leads to uh leads uh, that if you reverse the pair b a it won't have a parent in the jellyfish so therefore uh each node has length one tentacles like uh that tentacle have no uh, parent so like that uh we 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 prove that each jellyfish is bell head like the orbit and with length one tentacles from each node and there are some, uh, 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 I mean, hard stuff like uh, we, we will see uh, uh, using, uh, we can see using computer program, we can compute jellyfish for, for some larger finite fields. Like if we compute F67, uh, then it has 18 uh, node jellyfish. And the slightly bigger than 67, if you, if you compute the jellyfish for uh, uh, 83, it has, 410 node jellyfish so which is quite strange like uh, like so 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 in future we we want to study like uh, some distributions of the like how uh, like uh, like the how the distribution of the size of uh, the nodes are uh, are distributed so these are some hard stuff that uh, that that uh, yeah are yet to be studied we we did some uh, I mean, uh, what we say, we can, uh, we we probe some easy stuff, and the hard stuffs are still uh, need to be done. So uh, let me just uh, uh, give you a table that describe like uh, uh, like how many uh, jellyfish appears in a jellyfish swarm. This is also a difficult problem, like to compute uh, or maybe to uh, have an idea how many jellyfish appear in a in a jellyfish swarm so here if you consider qs3 then uh, then we have no jellyfish as 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 the the only uh, uh, elements of three we have one and two so as we know two is not a square so we don't have an admissible pair so we we have we won't get a jellyfish uh, for uh, q equal to three so as we have seen earlier if you consider seven then we have one jellyfish and if you compute uh, F7, we, we, we have three jellyfish, like so on. Let me just give you some uh, uh, like some jumps here. So if you uh, compute uh, the jellyfish for the finite field 191, then we have 14 jellyfish. And the next prime, so, so whenever I say next prime means prime, next prime, which is of the form Q convert to three mod four, that, that is our uh, first uh, uh, condition. Q needs to be, three mod four, everything here is uh, three mod four. So next prime means the next prime, which is going to be three mod four. So, so when we compute the next prime of uh, 191, we get uh, 199. So here we can see there, there we have a jump, like for 191, we have 14 jellyfish, but for 199, we have 101 jellyfish. So like here, we for 211, we have 120 jellyfish in the jellyfish swarm. And the next prime to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, two to three, we have 18 jellyfish, which is, uh, I mean, uh, like, the, uh, which is surprising. Like, like for this one, we have 120 and we have, uh, for, the, for the next, we have 18 uh, jellyfish. So, so this is uh, strange. And surprisingly, if we compute uh, for F uh, four seventy nine, we have eighteen jellyfish, and uh, and just the next, like uh, for F four eighty seven, so we have three hundred fifty nine jellyfish. So this is quite uh, surprising. Like it is behavior is behavior is very different. It's not like it's not the growth is not. Uh, it's not. Uh, I mean, uh, quite uh, 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 like uh, smooth. Uh, I had a question, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so about the size of the orbit size, do you have any characterization? Like, is it bounded 
is there a bound ah uh, no like a uh, for for like uh, we haven't uh, get any bound for the nodes uh like uh, or maybe any lower bound or any upper one we won't have but uh we we have a bound for uh for the number of jellyfish i mean i'll i'll we okay. will see in the next slide so so th that's how, like that's how like this uh stops are quite uh i mean uh surprising like it is it will be interesting if we could say some kind of distribution like the behavior of the number of nodes in a jellyfish i mean it could be i mean uh interesting in future if we can uh study those mm -hmm. so so here so now uh uh we'll uh see some connection like so we we so we have an agm sequence we and out of the agm sequence we make directed graphs which we call them jellyfish worm and now uh, from each jellyfish uh, no, it's from each jellyfish like from each node like uh, we, we we call this the the spots in this uh, graph so we we map this spots to uh, some uh, families of elliptic curves okay so 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 we we we, we so we will uh, we will say that 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 agm sequence is a device for organizing special uh, family of elliptic curves and why we say this say this we'll uh, see uh, in our next slides so let me just briefly give you the definition of an elliptic curve an elliptic curve is uh, is a smooth cubic uh, projective curve with rational points so here we consider an elliptic curve in a fine uh, space for example if we choose this uh, uh, curve y square equal to x cube minus 3 x plus 5 so we draw this curve in uh, which is in red so so this so this uh, the, uh, this uh, curve is uh, important because uh, so if you uh, uh, compute then uh, if you, if we ha if you consider two points in this curve we can add those these two points like here we have p and q if we draw if we uh, add these two point how do we add so so here, if we uh, uh, make the straight line passing through P and Q, it will cut the curve in the in this point and then make a, a, a line which is uh, parallel to Y axis. It will cut here, and this point is called uh, P plus Q. All we know, like the elliptic curves are uh, studied because of uh, the, its group structure. It is quite famous. So so uh, and uh, and there are some important beautiful theorems by model. Which uh, which gives that if we restrict the coordinates to to rational numbers, then the group uh, is uh, the group of uh, rational points on this elliptic curve is finitely generated abelian group, which is isomorphic to this uh, this group where here this it contains the elements which are finite and here uh, it contains uh, the R copies. Of, of G and this R, uh, as we all know, it is called the rank of an elliptic curve. And I think all we know, like study of rank of an elliptic curve, is quite a uh, uh, I mean, hot topic nowadays. So, so yeah. So these are some uh, uh, basic stuff for elliptic curve. So we are not studying elliptic curve in this talk, but we some we use elliptic curve to uh, we use AGM to organize some some kind of elliptic curves. So, so uh, in our work, we use this special family of elliptic curve, like uh, Lazenby family of elliptic curve. So this is a special family of elliptic curve, or we can say one parameter family of elliptic curve because this curve depends on lambda. So if lambda is an element of the finite field FQ, which is different from zero and one, then uh, this equation, y square equal to x, x minus one, x minus lambda. So this is an uh, elliptic curve. Uh, and this uh, curve vary when we vary lambda. So this is one parameter family of elliptic curve. So this uh, curve is, uh, uh, I mean, quite, uh, I mean, uh, uh, famous because of its group structure. So as, as we we all know, like uh, this group Z two times Z two, like the claim for uh, group contains in this uh, uh, in the group of rational points of this elliptic curve E lambda. And uh, also we know like if Q convert three mod four, then the two silo subgroup of E lambda square here, note that lambda is a square. The, the, so this group contains, uh, I mean, is uh, contains this uh, subgroup Z two times Z four, or maybe in fact, we can say it is equal. So B is not, uh, B is varying. 
So of course we have Z2 times Z4 contained in the sub, uh, contained in the group of E lambda square. So these are some important uh, uh, facts that we, we will use in our results. So, so here uh, we, 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 we give a map uh, from the spots of the jellyfish that map to the family of elliptic, uh, legendary family of elliptic curves. Like here we have this jellyfish swarm. So, so we map each node uh, to a special family called the legendary family of elliptic curves by this. Uh, so, 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 so for any admissible pair AB in the jellyfish, psi maps AB to this uh, legendary curve E lambda AB, where lambda AB is B square over A square. So any uh, node uh, or any spot in the jellyfish map to uh, E of B square over A square. So this uh, family of elliptic curve. So, so, so if we uh, uh, see some examples, so for example, if you consider the jellyfish for, uh, the, for this uh, tuple 6.3. So if we compute uh, the, the, the psi image of the psi map over F7, so we obtain that we have only two elliptic curves like E2 and E4. E4 appears like after that, everything will be E4. So therefore, it has only two curves, E2 and E4. Like here, we, we can say like, uh, what is 6, 3? So 6, 3 will map to 3 score over uh, 3 score over 6 score, which is like 1 over 4. And, uh, and, and inverse of 4, in uh, F7 is two, so therefore uh, E2, and like here we have E4. So let's just see some examples. As we have uh, seen earlier, like F19, we have this eight jellyfish. And out of this eight jellyfish, if you map, if you choose this jellyfish, it will map to, uh, by the psi map, it will map to this network of elliptic curves. Like here we have E6, uh, E, nine, then E16, then E9, like that, so on. Again, E17 map to uh, E16, then E9, then E16, like that. So now the next uh, observation is, uh, what are these directed graphs? Like from here, we make this network of- yeah. can, say can, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. How, why this B squared by A squared? How, what is the reason for associating such an elliptic curve? The, the uh, form. Yeah, so it has some, uh, it, it has some uh, uh, meaning from, I think it some, has some analogy from the classical, a uh, classical AGM. So, so the thing is uh, classical AGM, if you compute uh, the, the limit of any pair AB, you will get, uh, it will, the limit uh, can be derived in terms of elliptic integral, which is eventually you can, uh, uh, we, you can uh, get connection to the spatial uh, uh, functions like uh, uh, like hypergeometric functions, uh, which involves pi and the parameters are one half, one half, and uh, like one minus uh, like so, so like if we have a pair a b and if you compute the AGM sequence and the limit of that sequence is given by a special value of uh, hypergeometric function like which involve parameters one half and one and uh, an and argument of that uh, hypergeometric function is one minus b square over a square. And so, if we, and, uh, and that uh, hypergeometric function is a, uh, is a period of an elliptic curve, okay? La period of a legendary family of elliptic curve uh, whose, uh, uh, lambda in that case lambda is one minus b square over a square and since uh, minus one is a quadratic uh, uh, non residue so therefore e of if you choose e of one minus b square over a square which is a quadratic twist of e of b square over a square so 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 that so that's how uh, I mean in the finite field case like we 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 make uh, Initially, we choose e of uh, one minus b square over a square as the as the I mean the image, but uh, later on we realize that if we choose the quadratic twist of uh, one minus b square over a square, it will give you a special uh, map between 
the elliptic curves that we'll, uh, we'll see in our later slides. So that's how this legendary family of elliptic curves like B square over A square is coming here in this picture, like analogously, like uh, the, 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 like the limit of the AGM sequence over R is somehow uh, connected to the periods of uh, an legendary family of elliptic curve. So of this, like uh, like one minus B square over A square lambda. So lambda coming from uh, those kind of stuffs. Yeah. yeah. Are you, are you, are you uh, convinced or can I go ahead? Uh, you're saying you or R, if you start with any uh, number A and B, mm -hmm. right? um, and uh, then you get connected, uh, it gets uh, eventually the, uh, what you get to the limit is uh, associated to this elliptic curve, which is yep. B squared by A squared, or yes. 1 minus B squared by A squared. It is uh, 1 minus B squared over, so in case of R. 1 minus B squared by A squared, okay. Yes. Okay. Then uh, since, uh, uh, so here, if we choose uh, like uh, infinite field at Q, so since our our field is uh, Q convert three mod four, therefore one minus B square over A square is a quadratic twist of E of B square over A square. Yeah, no, that's okay. But yeah, but the thing is okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, so this is our map uh, that gives you uh, that AB uh, uh, takes to E of uh, B square over A square. So yeah, so so here, uh, so the, so the next thing is we need to observe like uh, what is uh, the significance of this map? Okay, so like uh, like is this our do we have a connection between E seven and E sixteen? These maps are just just the like what is the significance? They are just the image of uh, image of psi, or do they have some significant meaning in terms of elliptic curve? So these are the questions that we uh, uh, we would like to study in our work. So here, to know the significance of these arrows, uh, we uh, uh, we need to uh, introduce a notion which is called isogeny. So isogeny of an elliptic curve is a uh, is a non-constant structure preserving map that maps identity to identity and the kernel uh, whose kernel is finite. And uh, and uh, here we. Uh, uh, we uh, uh, prove that. So if we choose a finite field of uh, Q, whose characteristic is at least seven, and of course we have Q convenient three mod four, then uh, as we all know that the image of the psi map uh, contains E lambda square, like everything is a uh, square, E lambda square, like E alpha square here. So it has Q minus one pre-images. So anything it is easy to show. Because uh, as you see, like uh, if you choose a tuple A, B, which is admissible. So if you choose a tuple that will map to B square over A square, then if you choose any tuple with multiple K, like K, A, comma, K, B, that will also map to the same elliptic curve. And since A, B is an admissible pair, so K, A, comma, K, B is, is also an admissible pair. So therefore, and what, uh, what are the choices for K? K have, we have Q minus one choices. So therefore we have Q minus one pre-images like an elliptic curve in the image. It has Q minus one fibers here. And uh, each admissible pair like A and uh, comma, like it is uh, maybe called adjacent pairs, uh, A and B and goes to A and plus one, B and minus one. For each adjacent pair, the corresponding elliptic curves, hmm, they are connected via this psi n map. So this map is, uh, is, is an isogeny map between these two elliptic curve, like the corresponding next elliptic curve. So yeah, so those arrows are, are just, just not simple maps. They are, are, they are isogeny. And the kernel of the psi n is given by, uh, it, it, is, it contains two elements, identity and a zero zero. So, so yeah, so, so now we have, uh, now we from the jellyfish, we have an isogeny network of elliptic curves. So, 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 so that's why we, we say that AGM, sequ AGM sequence is somehow uh, is a device for organizing a uh, uh, isogenous network of uh, elliptic curves. So now there are some uh, uh, theorems that we uh, prove. So, so we prove that for each jellyfish, like when we, com when we compute uh, the isogeny network of elliptic curves, since each, uh, uh, each frame of elliptic curve, like here, each, each frame, because they are isogenous, so they have the same number of uh, points over FQ in, in a single 
uh, 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 in a single network of elliptic curve. So not only they they have same number of points, they have the the, the group of like group of uh, rational points are isomorphic. Like they have only one group in a in a in in one frame. So here, like uh, like uh, we 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 prove that there is an abelian group G such that for all uh, pairs A N and B N. So if you compute the corresponding elliptic curves in a single uh, uh, frame of elliptic curve, we have that this all uh, uh, groups are same. They are isomorphic to a single group G. And in fact, two zero subgroup of G is given by this uh, this uh, uh, set. And uh, as we we know that the the, the since uh, the all have the same uh, number of points, so the and and we all and uh, and and a quantity which is called traces of Frobenius uh, uh, of an elliptic curve. Uh, so so a trace of Frobenius is is the is defined as q plus one minus number of points on the on the elliptic curve. So that quantity is also fixed because the number of points are uh, same. Therefore, that quantity, like which is given by AQI, so traces of Frobenius is also fixed for any pair uh, appears in the jellyfish A and B N, which is uh, defined by this. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, the, by a theorem of Ken Ono, we, we we can show that this traces of Frobenius AQI, so it is related to uh, uh, it given by some. Uh, uh, scalar multiple of uh, a special value of 2f1 hypergeometric function. So what is this function? Let me just quickly give you the definition. So if uh, phi and epsilon, so if they are, uh, uh, if they are uh, characters over fq, like uh, of order two and one, then green, uh, uh, then green define this function in terms of uh, character sum, which involves this binomial. So these are some uh, character sum so which involves this Jacobi sum. So this is 2f1 uh, hypergeometric function defined by green. And it, this function is important in its own way, but somehow it comes uh, in connection with elliptic curve, like here we have this result. So now uh, we have some examples that give you the group. Like if you consider this uh, network of elliptic curve, the, all the groups are isomorphic. We have four groups, uh, four uh, elliptic curves whose groups are all given by this uh, group, Z2 times Z12. Okay, so now, uh, now uh, as we have uh, discussed earlier, the finding number of uh, jellyfish is a kind of a uh, 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 difficult problem. So here we, we obtain a bound for, for this, uh, uh, for the number of uh, jellyfish. So I think we can say this is not a sufficient, I mean, it's not very effective bound. I think we can say that it is some loose bound for, number of jellyfish we we prove that if uh, q con root 3 mod 4 then number of jellyfish is at largest uh, this quantity so the, it is uh, the proof involved this two fact it is uh, 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 it mainly depends on counting different groups for e lambda score and and we have to note that by the uh, theorem of hasa that uh, the trace of an elliptic curve lying in this um, interval and as because uh, it divides the group because we have e lambda score every time. Therefore, it, it divides the uh, number of groups. Uh, and I think I'll uh, I will uh, quickly go because I think I'm running out of time. So I think it it is not very difficult to 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 get this bound. But however, this bound is not very much effective. We will uh, see from this examples like we we compute the number of jellyfish for for these fields. And as you can see here, it is 87 is greater than uh, this square of q by uh, two, which is I think much greater than this. Therefore, we claim that that uh, I think I think one effective bound could be this one. But yet we we won't have a proof like the bound on a on the lower bound on the number of jellyfish is this much. So this is need to be done. It's not done yet. So yeah. So now well, now the thing is uh, we have to uh, 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 so like here we have four uh, different curves appear here. So how do we count how many different uh, elliptic curves appear in a jellyfish? So this is our next uh, uh, observation to count uh, how differently a curve appear in a jellyfish. So here we have some, uh, like I have to quickly go. 
So, 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 uh, so we have to introduce uh, class numbers. So for that, we need orders in a quadratic field. So orders in a quadratic field is a subring contains one, which is finitely generated Z module, and it contains a Q basis. So, so yes, and this and one important quantity related to an order of a, a quadratic field is known as discriminant. Discriminant is defined as this determinant of this uh, uh, this lambda. So this is the generators of the uh, order, and these are the uh, non-trivial automorphisms. And discriminant uniquely determines order. Therefore, it is uh, well defined. So now uh, I want to introduce uh, something called, which is a uh, uh, class, uh, ideal class group. So, so if you have an order, then we can, uh, we can define its proper fractional ideals. Out of that, we can compute the principal ideals and CD, which is a group uh, ID modded by PD. It is called ideal class group of an order. And this order of the group is finite, which is called the class number. And we relate the class number to, to count the number of uh, curves that appear in the jellyfish form. So here, this is a more general class number called the Harvitz class number, which, which is given by the sum of this class number. So if, if O is, a, uh, is an order of discriminant negative D, then the sum is all in between the intermediate orders here, like this is called the Harvitz class number. And we, uh, we count the number of uh, different ellipticals by this uh, class number. So if M, S, so if it denotes the number of distinct J invariant among the jellyfish, uh, we trace as S, then the number of different uh, uh, J invariants that appears in the jellyfish uh, uh, swarm is given by this uh, class number. So for example, what is the J invariant of an elliptic curve? I mean, uh, elliptic curve in, in particular for Legendre family is given by this uh, formula. So for example, if we, if we compute a trace four family, we, we compute this psi maps and we have only these four uh, elliptic curves. If we compute their J invariants, we have two different J invariants, five and 15, therefore MS is four is two. And if we compute the, 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 the class number, Harvitz class number, we get two. So, so yeah, this, this two are equal. So, so yeah, this is the main thing that we, 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 uh, we obtain, that we make jellyfish and then we uh, somehow make this as a device to obtain some isogeny network of elliptic curves. So these are some difficult problems that, I mean, in future we could study, like, uh, like the uh, size of a jellyfish, like how many nodes are there, like, to get an upper bound or maybe a lower bound and uh, like uh, and the number of jellyfish. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think I have taken a lot of time <laughs> extra. So I think uh, you were perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions or comments? Very nice talk. Any questions? From the audience. Yeah, so do you have a, uh, such uh, constructions when Q is congruent to one mod four or? Oh, yeah, I mean, I think it, it uh, if you choose Q congruent to one mod four, then I think uh, choosing a square root is, uh, I mean, we won't get a unique square root like uh, if you like uh, for, uh, if you choose, uh, if A is a square, then minus a is also a square because minus one is a square in uh, in a, in for q one mod three. So therefore, we, we won't get a, uh, a unique choice of score. So it that is a kind of difficulty, uh, like uh, so somehow like we have to uh, like in the in the case of r we we uh, we omit the negative uh, real line. So like yeah, in the in the case of uh, finite field, we have to choose like we have. Half of the primes are uh, uh, Q can do three mod four. So yeah, I mean, I think for Q can do one mod four. I mean, uh, we cannot define uh, such definition. Uh -huh. I have a bizarre question. So if you look at AGMs but over Q bar, like the algebraic closure, mm -hmm. that's still allowed, right? Because you can take square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's still allowed. Like if you can. Uh, like if you, uh, we can, uh, I mean, uh, uh, like, uh, like since minus one is not a score in FQ, but we can get the extension so that it is a score. So in that, in that way, we, we could study, 
uh, like you can uh, study using the generators of 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 like of the uh, of the finite field but i think uh, i think uh, if you want to stay in the base field that then i think yeah, yeah. so i have a related question i mean what about definitions for pi in in, in such a thing i mean you you had a formula where agm was Converting. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you can uh, so like uh, when you compute uh, uh, the AGM sequence uh, A, 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 and B, then uh, the limit, like uh, the limit of uh, limit of uh, the sequence, is uh, somehow given by the uh, elliptic integral, which is and uh, like and those elliptic integrals have some closed formula, which itself include pi, and and some special functions. So that's how, like, th this was all done by Gauss. So, I mean, that's so my how. My question is, do you have analogs in finite fields for that? that kind yeah, of I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, those are uh, some kind of stuff like, uh, like, as I have mentioned earlier, those are somehow connected to periods of elliptic curves, mm -hmm. uh, like over, over, over complex number. So here, like, uh, if you replace period by, uh, by traces of Frobenius of uh, elliptic curve, uh, then, uh, and then, uh, like those are, I think, pi could be replaced by q uh, in finite field, and you have we have some analogous formula for if you uh, for traces of Frobenius in terms of uh, go green hypergeometric like over finite fields. Those are some different different directions of like special functions. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, any further questions or comments? Just a follow-up question on the Q congruent uh, one mod four. Yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering, like uh, the Q congruent three mod four, for any uh, you know A and B n, mm -hmm. you know basically we know that A and B n uh, quadratic residue. If not, then minus B n will work actually. Yep. Yep. But why not uh, you take a quadratic non-residue, a fixed quadratic non-residue, you know modulo Q congruent one mod four, mm -hmm. and uh, when you see that you at some point you had a and b n, but it's the Legendre symbol uh, n is minus one. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you know that if you multiply b n or a n with respect to that fixed quadratic non residue, then of mm -hmm. course, then onwards, because at the end, q congruent 3 mod 4 minus one is that fixed, you know. So why not no, work yeah. around? Yeah, I mean, but I mean, you cannot uh, do that, I think, because uh, see, so here choosing a, a unique square root matters. Like when you have uh, like a square root of, uh, like square root of four is either two or minus two, right? But, uh, uh, but like, but uh, in the next stage, if you choose, uh, uh, if you choose the next prime, like uh, 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 the next uh, pair, so, so here uh, you, you, you are not, you can choose two as well as minus two. And uh, ultimately like, uh, like uh, you will get uh, adding up, like uh, you won't get an or end up in some orbit. Like, okay, like yeah, that's, uh, that's a degree, yeah, that's a degree. Yeah. I mean, um, what I meant is you can continue the sequence. Yeah, we can continue the sequence, has, but yeah. But, but it is the uniqueness and the other is the existence. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, so, yeah. Existence is important here because uh, we won't get uh, end up in some orbit. We just uh, have some few. We we can compute some few terms, and after that, we stuck. So, no, we, we got can... yeah. okay, any further questions or queries? Okay, if not, then let's uh, unmute for a second and thank the speaker. Very nice talk.